Welcome back everyone, I hope you're having a great day, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at two of the top tech companies that may be a great buy after their latest earnings. Both companies shared incredible numbers, absolutely crushing Wall Street's expectations, and going forward, they both laid out plans to continue to grow at a very nice rate for many years to come. So in this episode, we're going to break down the top numbers from these two big tech companies, take a look at their current operations, examine their financial statements, and the future expectations from different analysts for the next five years in the future. And before we take a look at these two companies, I'm going to ask you to please hit that like button and subscribe. I am the Gen Z Investor, and every single day we talk about the stock market, going over different stocks you can buy, and any major market news. So please hit that like button, subscribe for the daily videos. And the first big tech company that we're going to take a look at in this episode is Google, ticker G-O-O-G-L, or their parent company Alphabet, who currently trades for $2,392 per share, and over the trailing 12 months, they are up by 78%. The company has a market cap at $1.6 trillion, and are trading with a very reasonable Ford PE for such a fast-growing company at only 27.6. And right now... Google is a cash flow machine, they have extremely high profit margins, and they rake in tens of billions of dollars of cash flow every single year. And according to Simply Wall Street, who does a discounted cash flow analysis, where they forecast out all of Google's future cash flows and discount them back to the current point in time, they believe the company is actually 25% undervalued at their current level, and they estimate that Google's true fair value per share is at $3,203, so a lot of upside to get to that level from where we are today. So this company, according to this program, is actually undervalued according to the projections of their future cash flows over the long term. So this is a very strong company who is potentially trading at an undervalued level at this current point in time. And if we take a look at their first quarter numbers, we saw massive revenue growth, and the total sales in the first three months of 2021 came in at $55.31 billion, crushing the expectation that was set at 51.7. And their total earnings came in at $26.29 per share, beating the expectation of $15.82. And Google announced a major $50 billion share buyback program. So although this company does not pay out a dividend, they do return a ton of capital to their investors every single year through the form of these massive share buybacks. And with Google, one thing I want to focus on that I believe will lead to long-term success and growth of the company is YouTube. Right now, if you're unaware, Google owns YouTube. And in the first quarter of 2021, the program generated over $6 billion in total revenue, being the expectation that came in at 5.7. And I think many investors right now are undervaluing how big YouTube can be over the longer term. And in 2021, the platform has the potential to actually surpass Netflix in total revenue over the full calendar year. And this is a media juggernaut that completely exploded due to the global pandemic. And if we take a look at some of YouTube's numbers, the growth is absolutely spectacular. So like we saw, total revenue of over $6 billion in the quarter which was up 49% from the prior year. And what's incredible is that they're actually growing at a faster rate than Netflix, who reported a 24% revenue growth over their prior year number. And if its current growth continues, YouTube will generate between 29 and 30 billion in total sales throughout 2021. And for the same time period, Netflix is projected to generate 29.7 billion in revenue over this year. So right now, this platform can actually rival Netflix, who as a standalone company, is worth over $220 billion. And although the two companies have very different business models, where Netflix generates revenue through a monthly subscription, and YouTube is ad-based, I think over the longer term, the potential for YouTube to surpass Netflix is very strong. And right now, in 2021, 81% of US adults watch YouTube videos above the 73% that was set back in 2019. So over the past two years, they continue to expand YouTube and 81% of the US adult population watches videos on the YouTube platform, which is incredibly impressive. And if we take a look at time spent watching videos, YouTube users watch 1 billion hours of videos per day, 
while Netflix viewers tune in for 400 million hours. So right now, YouTube is actually getting 2.5 the amount of watch time every single day across their global platform. So although the companies operate in different manners, I think the potential for YouTube to grow much larger than Netflix in the next two decades is actually there because ad spend through digital platforms is only going to grow. I'm a true believer that all traditional forms of advertisements are going to go down and the digital world is going to take over for the long term and YouTube being primarily an ad based service is going to generate immense revenue over the long term. I think it's only going to get more competitive, ad rates are going to go up and over time this platform will be larger than where Netflix is right now. So I think investors who own Google for the actual parent company Alphabet and Google itself are undervaluing how big YouTube can be as its own standalone entity over the longer term. And if we take a look at Google's financials, they are in one of the strongest financial positions out of any company in the entire world. If we start off with the income statement, year over year, total revenue continues to grow to over 196 billion in the trailing 12 months, and their total top line has more than doubled over the past five years, going from 90 to over 196. And this company also has incredibly high profitability. If we take a look at their net income, over the past 12 months, they have over $51 billion of profits, which is another metric that continues to grow year over year as well. And Google is a cash flow machine. If we jump over to their actual cash flow statement, we can see that their total free cash flow over the past year is at $50.7 billion, and every single year, that number continues to grow. From 22 up to 31, 42, and now over $50 billion of cash coming into the business over the past year, which is incredibly to even imagine. And that's why they can afford to do these $50 billion worth of share buybacks over the upcoming year. And if we take a look at the balance sheet, they are in an incredibly strong financial position with $135 billion of total cash on the balance sheet. And whenever I talk about these companies, this is something I love to say, is that there's not many companies in the entire world. There's only a few worth over $135 billion. And Google has that sitting in cash. They can do so much with this money. They can research and develop. They can make acquisitions. They can grow their current operations. And the company has so much funds to continue to operate for long into the future. And if we take a look at their total current assets of $172 billion compared to their short-term debt of only $55 billion, the company's current ratio is above three and extremely strong. And one thing I like about Google is the company only has $97 billion of total debt on the entire balance sheet. And with $135 billion of total cash, they can pay off all of their debt and still have close to $40 billion sitting on the balance sheet, which is absolutely incredible to even say out loud. And going forward, they have no projections of slowing down anytime soon. And we can see for 2021, the total revenue is projected to grow by over 28% to $234 billion. And then next year in 2022, we're expecting another 16% increase to $274 billion of total sales. And the company's actual share price is projected to grow by over 21% per year over the long term. And this factor does not include share buybacks. So if the company continues to buy back more and more shares, it will increase investor value and hopefully the share price will perform better than these analysts are forecasting. And right now, they are considered a strong buy coming in at a 1.7 and the current 12 month expectation is at $2,652, which is nicely above where we currently sit right now. So I think Google is definitely a top tech company that you should have in your portfolio for long-term share price appreciation. They're a cash flow machine, over $50 billion of income and cash flow over the trailing 12 months. I think the Ford PE is reasonable relative to the size of the growth over the long term. And I think YouTube right now is still extremely undervalued on how large it can be over the next few decades. So this was the first of two big tech companies we're going to go over in this episode. And now if we move on and take a look at that second name, it is Facebook. Ticker FB, currently trading for $329 per share. They're up 70% over the trailing 12 months, and they have a market cap at $872 billion, with a nice Ford PE of only 25.37. 
And similar to Google, this is another big tech company that generates a majority of their revenue through consumer ads. And right now, they're one of the go-to programs for small, medium, and even large-sized entities to advertise direct to consumer through the Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger platforms. And as Google is undervalued, according to Simply Wall Street, so is Facebook. And according to their estimates of the company's total free cash flow over the long term, they're projecting that Facebook is over 15% undervalued at their current level, and a true estimated fair value per share is at $390. So Facebook is similar to Google, where they generate a ton of cash flow every single year, and that's why this estimate sits in at close to $400 per share. And they also released their Q1 2021 results and have performed extremely well and their total revenue rose 48% over the same quarter back in 2020. And if we take a look at the numbers, total revenue for the first three months of this year came in at $26.17 billion versus the expectation of $23.67. And earnings per share came in at $3.30 crushing the expectation of $2.37. And what's incredibly impressive is that this company now has 2.8 billion monthly active users across all of their platforms. So right now the global population sits right around 7.5 billion people. And every single month of that entire global population, 2.85 billion use a Facebook service. That's just nuts to even imagine and although people are saying Facebook is dying down, the numbers are showing otherwise. Quarter over quarter, their total monthly active users is still growing without any bad quarters. So I think Facebook as a whole still has a lot of room to grow as a company because there's a lot of users who are not very well monetized at this current level and that will only continue to expand over the longer term. And because we're taking a look at Facebook as a whole and going over their current operations, we of course have to discuss the news that Apple is changing their privacy policies that will directly impact Facebook's ability to track consumers across multiple different websites and apps, and as well as impact the accuracy of their direct advertising. But once this news came out, investors were dumping Facebook stock. They believe that these new changes would directly hurt their advertising business, drop revenue, and hurt the overall brand of Facebook and the strength of their once spectacular ads over the next few years. But Mark Zuckerberg and his team are extremely innovative, and they actually believe they're going to thrive after this updated policy. And if you're unaware, right now Facebook can track users' movements across different apps. And right now to stop that, you actually have to manually go into your settings and turn it off. But Apple's new policy will now have a pop-up or a prompt and ask the users if they will allow Facebook to track their movements. And now with this new pop-up, it's estimated that 80% of consumers will click no and that will really limit Facebook's ability to track the direct ads across different websites or apps after they leave the Facebook website. But going forward, Facebook's believe they're actually going to thrive because this change does not only hurt Facebook, it hurts a lot of other advertisers as well. And why Facebook believes they're going to be successful after is because with their 2.8 billion people, they already have unlimited data. They already have so much knowledge about the consumers, what they like, what they don't like, and how to advertise to them. This change is going to hurt them too bad. And Mark Zuckerberg has outlined a plan on why he believes they will still be successful. And the strategy going forward is to get businesses and retailers to sell their products direct to consumer through a Facebook-owned marketplace. Whether it be Facebook Marketplace itself, a Facebook shop, or an Instagram shop, any one of these features which have been newly introduced to combat these policy changes by Apple will allow Facebook to still accurately track sales through their direct ads. And this is how it will work. The company outlined an example where just say I'm a retailer and I want to sell t-shirts. Rather than only having my t-shirts for sale on my own website, and before when I used to run Facebook ads, I used to advertise on Instagram or the Facebook platform, someone clicked my ad and it would direct them to my personal website, where then Facebook was able to track that sale from their active link. But now what Facebook's trying to pivot and strategize to do is to get these consumers and these businesses to actually shop directly through Instagram and Facebook. So with these new Facebook shops and Instagram shops, if I want to sell a t-shirt, I create my very own Instagram shop, I have an Instagram direct ad, once someone who's on Instagram scrolling or on the Explorer page 
clicks my ad, it'll bring them within the Instagram app directly to my store, no other services, no other platforms, and I can sell my shirt, direct the consumer through that platform, and I can still have the exact accuracy of how well my advertisers are performing. And Facebook is only gonna charge a slight 5% fee to help cover the payment processes and the different taxes with these different shops. And right now, that's actually below the industry average in this space. And Facebook said their plan is to not make money with this fee, but just to pay for the upkeep of the different services in order to facilitate the volume. And their actual whole goal with this is to continue to grow ad revenue by having these shops implemented across all of their different platforms. So they're going to keep the fee low, try to get different creators to sell directly through a Facebook owned service. And I think over the long term, this could be very successful if they can get mass adoption and make it a common thing to buy a product directly from an individual or a business through an Instagram or Facebook shop. So another company that's still pivoting as of late, the execs believe they're going to thrive after the new policy change. And I do believe they will. I think Facebook's extremely strong. I don't see any other competitors knocking them out of their leadership position in the social media and advertising space. And I think they'll do very well even after these changes. And if we take a look at their financial statements, similar to Google, this company has incredible numbers. Starting off with the income statement, year over year, total revenue has exploded from $27 billion in total sales back in 2016 to over $94 billion in total revenue in the trailing 12 months, they've more than tripled their total top line in a five year span. And this company is also very profitable as well with over $33 billion of net income in the trailing 12 months and their profit margin sits right around 35%. And what's impressive is that over the long term, they have maintained incredibly high margins, which shows how much of a moat this business has and that they can sustain this profitability over the long term. And we can see, starting back in 2013, they've maintained gross margins of above 80% over the longer term, operating margins right around 4%, and net margins have actually increased as of late to around 30 to 40% every single year. And this company generates consistent cash flow as well. If we take a look, year over year total cash flow comes in at a massive number, growing to over 23.6 billion in the trailing 12 months, and why I love Facebook so much, and I think they're one of the strongest growth companies, is because of their balance sheet. Right now, they have one of the strongest financial positions out of any company in the world. $64 billion of total cash is a mass amount of volume for a company only worth $870 billion. And overall, they have total current assets of $77 billion, with total current liabilities of only 12 a current ratio above six, extremely sustainable in this company's short-term financial position is very strong. And if we take a look at the total liabilities, this is why I love the company. They carry zero long-term debt on the balance sheet, zero. No long-term debt. I don't wanna, I can't even stress that enough how impressive that is for a company of this scale to carry no debt. All the other big tech companies, although their debt is very manageable compared to their revenue and their cash flow they still carry a couple hundred billion dollars worth of debt. This company carries zero. So I love that. I love strong balance sheets. That's what I look for when I pick investments and Facebook definitely has a strong balance sheet. Overall total liabilities of 30 billion and with cash coming in at right around 64, they can pay off every dollar worth of debt on their balance sheet in only 50% or less of their current cash balance, which is incredibly impressive. And overall, they have $163 billion of total assets, which continue to grow year over year. And one thing I wanna point out is that Facebook continues to expand without only making acquisitions. A lot of big companies, when they're at a scale and their current operations aren't growing, they have to acquire other businesses in order to grow. But if we take a look at Facebook, their goodwill has maintained flat over the past five years meaning they haven't made any major acquisitions and they don't have a lot of fake assets sitting on the balance sheet and we can see intangibles as they depreciate are going down. So Facebook continues to grow assets, but all their intangibles or the non-cash assets are remaining the same or falling, meaning Facebook's core assets or the real and the monetary volume of their goods is growing at a terrific rate year over year. And if we take a look at the company's equity, over the long term, it continues to grow at a terrific rate and it now sits at 133 billion on a nice steady upward trend every single year. 
and going forward, the company has no plans of slowing down and analysts aren't expecting a pullback anytime soon and they're forecasting 31% revenue growth throughout 2021, bringing their total revenue to right around $113 billion for the full year and then another 20% growth in 2022 to over $134 billion in total revenue. And if we take a look at the share price projections, we're expecting 21 to 22% annual appreciation. And at this current level, the company is considered a strong buy coming in at a 1.8 in the current share price of $329 is below the 12 month expectation of 370. So Facebook is definitely a top tech company worth taking a look at for your portfolio. Although they're in the news lately because of Apple and investors are worried about the movement over the long term, Facebook believes they're going to continue to thrive and perform very well going forward. And with a company as strong as them, with such a rock solid balance sheet, incredible financials, they will continue to operate for a long into the future. And I do believe this company, currently trading for $870 billion, will be worth much more over the longer term. So they were the second big tech company. We went over in this episode, of course, Google and Facebook both operate by selling ads and that's where they generate a majority of their sales and their income. But over the long term, I think digital advertising is only going to become more popular. I think more companies are going to focus on digital ad spend to grow their business. And I just think over the long term, these two companies will remain innovative, continue to dominate their industry and provide great returns, beating the S&P 500 going forward for many years. So definitely worth taking a look at for your own portfolio. Although I'm not a growth stock investor, if I were to be, these are two companies I would have at the top of my list. So thank you for watching to the end. I am the Gen Z Investor. Please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and join the community. And I will see you in tomorrow's episode.